The Child's First Picture Book by G. Laverne Freeman and Ruth Sunderlin Freeman with an introduction by Professor Patty S. Hill. Copyright 1933 Introduction Here, I believe, is an epic-making step in planning picture books for young children. In the past, we have had picture books galore, some bad, some good, and many indifferent. There are books which meet adult standards of art, and books which educators and others have decided that children ought to like. Here instead is one which has been tested and tried on children themselves. We adults may not be especially pleased with it, but toddlers are. While we must have experts in illustrative art and education to pass judgment on children's choices, the acid test of values takes place when a picture book passes into the hands of little children. If it fails to grip interest of its highest level, all the theories, criticisms, and judgments are of no avail. Child interest is not the sole test, but it is the final test of the success of artists and educators in providing pictures which hold attention and stir imagination. While this book puts the child first, it has received the wholehearted encouragement of leaders in psychological research, art, and education. The tremendous influence of pictures in building up ideals and setting standards of behavior is exemplified in the recent investigation of the effects of the movies as reported in Our Movie Made Children by Henry James Foreman. The psychology underlying this power of pictured or illustrated thought is in its infancy, and many more studies need be made. The authors of The Child's First Picture Book are pioneers in the scientific approach to the problem in early life. Experiments which preceded this effort to build a book upon children's preferences are recorded in a companion volume. It has been my privilege and pleasure to encourage and cooperate with others in providing laboratory situations where both these experiments and their practical application could be carried out and demonstrated. Both authors are trained workers, one in the field of psychological research, the other in daily classroom experience with young children. It is hoped that this venture will be welcomed by parents and teachers so that further studies may be inspired in the field where scientific research is much needed. Patty Smith Hill, Professor of Education, Teachers College, Columbia University. The Child's First Picture Book A Forward to Adults There have been picture books and books with pictures, almost without end. The only excuse for another one is the fact that it is radically different. The child's first picture book is that kind. It has been made by a group of nursery children for others of their own age. The authors have served merely as instruments in their hands. Whatever merit the book may have belongs to these young craftsmen. The only valid test of this merit rests with the larger audience of children to whom it is new addressed. The ideas for the pictures, as well as the stories appearing opposite each one, were contributed by children in the nursery schools at Whittaker in Evanston, Illinois, the National College of Education, and the Child Development Institute of Teachers College, Columbia University. It is beyond the scope of this forward to describe in detail how this book was made and how it should be used. Parents, teachers, and librarians interested in the contributions which pictures can make to child development will find help in The Child and His Picture Book, a companion volume by the same authors. The most desirable approach is to show the pictures without comment. However, if the child is not stimulated to create stories of his own, one of those printed should be read with the remark that, here is what one little boy said about this picture. What do you think they are doing? A picture book can be a big event in a child's life, and it can mean nothing to him at all. Adults who wish their next purchase to contribute to the first end may well be guided by the enthusiastic endorsement of those nursery children who had a part in the making of this book. G. Laverne Freeman, Ruth Sunderland Freeman She is swinging, leaves on top of her, little flower, little flower, little flower, big flower. Big flower. 
Engine, engine, on the track. Blue car, red car, all going to town. Here's a choo-choo boy in path. There's a little girl in a kite. Look at those birds. Look, look, look. Trees, birds, kite, going far up in the air. She holds the string. Sun is shining, little boy shoveling. When it's cold, I shovel the snow. The little girl cries, the boy is sorry, gives her a flower. That's her scooter, he wants it. Dogs, they yelp, bow wow, bow wow, dog wants bone. Boy says, can't have it, a boy, a dog, a bone, the other dog is full. She has many balloons, yellow, green, and blue. The little boy wants his balloon. I like the blue one. Oh, here he comes. Hands out like this. It's the slide. Zip we go. Bye, baby. Go to sleep. I shall take you to the park. She has a dolly. Birds are flying high. She's eating. Green table, green chair, green bowl. Eating breakfast. The little boy has milk. See the children? Eating carrots? Drinking milk? Girl is riding. So is Dolly. Little boy is blowing horn. That's how to play automobile. Toot toot! Here we come! Bedtime. Says the clock. See the cat? And the moon? Little boy, big clock, tick-tock, see the moon? The end.